From the NLGJA convention in San Diego, this is NLGJA TV. Jenny Kopstein began her Navy career on the USS Shiloh, based in San Diego. When you get to a ship, the first thing everybody asks you is all about your prior life. Kupstein, a lesbian serving under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, didn't want to lie to her shipmates. She decided to write a letter to her commanding officer saying, I'm a lesbian, that's the way it is, but that doesn't mean I can't do my job. Two years later, she got the news that she was being discharged. Now Kopstein, along with 11 other plaintiffs, is fighting back in court. Jason Knight, a Navy linguist, was discharged two years ago for being gay. A year later, he was called back to active duty. I was incredibly shocked. They kicked me out for being gay. Why are they calling you back? Feeling a sense of duty, he redeployed. Knight talked about serving openly in a newspaper interview, questioning the military's policy on gays and lesbians. Within weeks, he was kicked out a second time. Statistics show the number of gay service people discharged dropped dramatically with the start of the war on terror, with military commanders apparently turning a blind eye. They realize that these people have uh, job skills that are needed that don't just you know, come every day. Knight is now working with the Service Members Legal Defense Network, which continues to fight Don't Ask, Don't Tell. For military lawyer Bridget Wilson, the war gives that fight a new urgency. The lesson of Don't Ask, Don't Tell is not that, that I or other gay people need that military. That military needs us. For Jenny Kupstein, winning this battle means keeping a promise. In my mind, I still owe the Navy at least two years of service. How are you? Gay or straight, it's that sense of duty that endures. John Kernjack, NLGJA TV. Last year's San Diego Pride was one to be remembered. A hate crime happened just outside of Pride. 60 attacks occurred over the following 90 days. Bob Lehman decided he'd had enough. The original idea was to um, promote safety at uh, gay and lesbian events, uh, but after the attacks started happening in our neighborhood, uh, we just wanted a safe place to live. Lehman founded Stonewall Citizens Patrol. This watch group keeps neighbors informed of safety concerns and works as a liaison between the community and the police department. Uh, they help us with educating the public on some of these uh, crime issues and trends uh, when we can't get out there. They're actually an extension of us um, when we need them. And there's indications of what kind of attacks have occurred. After a night out and a few drinks, it can be easy to let your guard down. Stonewall Citizens Patrol hands out flyers like these, reminding patrons to pay attention, stand well at areas, and not be a hero. Layman and his colleagues patrol the streets, working with local bars, and helping patrons get home safely. This is extremely beneficial because it, it's an extra step to make sure that our customers are taken care of. And it seems to be working. The crime rate in uh, Hillcrest, North Park area, uh, is down uh, about 30%, the violent crime, uh, which is huge. Uh, and that was just after three months after we started. Although Hillcrest is safe for now, Stonewall Citizens Patrol will continue to keep their community secure by educating the public and guarding the streets. Paul David Lampy, NLGJA TV. For seven years, Roxy Devine slept on the streets of San Diego. I was sad, you know, depressed, scared, but my main thing was, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna survive? You know, what do I do next? Roxy, who identifies himself as a gay man, was forced into homelessness at the age of 16 when he came out to his parents. A large amount of our residents have been ejected from their homes because of their sexual orientation. Dana Topple is the program coordinator for San Diego's Youth Housing Project. It provides housing and support for young adults moving out of group homes or off the street. Almost half of San Diego's homeless youth are identified as being members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. They are known as throwaway teens, not accepted by the community, and thrown out by their parents. The program works to get them into a safer environment, then helps them find a job. 
22-year-old Michael Mobley was homeless for three weeks, desperate to get his life together. He's been at the Youth Housing Project for 15 months. Me having my own place, um, pretty much, it's, it's been really, uh, it's been great. Residents are given the opportunity to start their lives over and to follow their goals. Living in this house enables me to focus on what I need to do and, um, and pretty much have a positive attitude and stay away from negativity. It really gives them an opportunity to do anything. They have access to building a totally different life than what they've lived. Building a life and building a home. Finally, there was this place <laughs> that I could go and would give me the opportunity to call my, you know, something my own, my, my house. Here at the Youth Housing Project, many of today's forgotten youth are given a second chance. Kristen Folks, NLGJA TV. For people of faith, finding a religious community means fitting in. For lesbians and gay men who are Jewish, finding that fit can be challenging. There's me, and I was Jewish first, and then coming out in a lesbian relationship, and then, okay, take it to the next level. You know, I wanted to get more involved in things that were Jewish. Getting involved became even more important when Ivy Stein had kids. Two mommy to go monsters. Finding a synagogue that would accept two moms was crucial. Like Ivy, Seth Krosner is an active member of San Diego's gay Jewish community. He says people of faith should demand to be included and have their needs addressed like any other family. Either Judaism and other religions have to learn to live without gay people or they have to build a place for them. Jewish scholars are still divided on what their faith says about sexual orientation and gender identity. But for many leaders within the community, it's a non-issue. We accept LGBT people as people. We try not we're, not, we're not there to distinguish one person from the other. And I think that's really what this is all about. This year, when Ivy Stein enrolled her son in Hebrew school, she was pleasantly surprised. Instead of mother and father on the forms, they had parent and parent. It is really cool to be accepted as a Jewish lesbian with kids in a congregation. Because that's just, that's what it is. It's just, okay, that's who you are, and you're welcome here, and, and they accept us just as we are. Amy Van Vechten, NLGJA-TV.